What's up guys, Doug Polk here and we're back with another episode of Poker Hands and today we're going to be taking a look at a hand that was played on Poker Night in America at the Choctaw Casino last weekend. Let's go ahead and jump into the action. I mean, I'm not one of them, but some of us. <laughs> David Baker, all business today. <laughs> Doug Polk. It's been a long time. It's a hand that I means business. He picks up the kangaroos. <laughs> Don't touch me. <laughs> What about that? Kangaroos, that's a good one. <laughs> Ite with the call. I saw him look at his cards and then put him back down. I'm like, what, can, what, what looks so good there for a second? Kyle Julius with the aces. He's had a good day, too. Remember, he won about 12,000 in the last session, and he's winning another 1,000 in this session. And he's got a good amount of money in front of him, and all the money he's getting in. Here we go. I, I can't watch this, guys. I'm sorry. No, I was trying to put you all in. Yeah, it would have basically been 1,400. Three bet is to 1,450. The 9-5 suited isn't looking so attractive. I've had a ton of fun cash games. I mean, I play here and at Windstar all the time, but this is definitely a six of cake. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. I didn't see the chips that you were shuffling in your hand, so I thought Can we get some stack sizes? You know what was really fun at that time that Kelly tried to bluff me, but she had the best hand? That was that was really fun. Can we get some stack sizes? I will say, Twitch chat is rough. I took a read at some of it. What did they say? Yeah. Oh, I don't even want uh, to repeat. <laughs> oh my gosh, Twitch. Well, if it makes you feel any better, Twitch chat called me a sloth one time. A what? It happened. A sloth? Yeah, they said I looked like a sloth. They realized, like. Don't worry, Ashley. They they they, they called Brandon much worse. I was offended for about five minutes, and then I realized oh, I don't sloth, give a crap sloths are really yeah. cute. <laughs> <laughs> I have way and the person typing it probably to worry is about not. Than what, <laughs> what social media thinks of me. Exactly. I'm like, give me a break. If you think Twitch chat is brutal, check out YouTube. Oh, YouTube is rough. <laughs> YouTube <laughs> hates me. Poor. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and she's trying me on uh, 41, Poker News. She gets. Julius has 15 grand in front of him. And it's about to be 30. So, so Julius has a real decision here. Uh, if he thinks that Doug Polk is capable of re raising on a bluff, then it's possible he could just call. What does it mean, 20? Yeah, it is. Um, I prefer not to. Um, you want to make sure you get the money in when he's got ace-king here. Well, do you think that Doug Polk is four-bet getting in ace-king every time for 150 bigs here? Probably. No, right? but once he four-bets, he's getting it in. Correct, yeah. But what I'm saying is if he had ace-king, might he just flat? Well, there you go. You got. That's, that's exactly what happened. He Kyle flatted. just calls. I don't mind this because you're going to still get it in most of the time against against. Uh, the ranger describing him. I mean, when he does have kings, when he does have queens, a lot of times you're going to get it in. Yeah. So I think it, it, it just comes down to how frequently Doug Polk is, is four bet bluffing here. Yep. Kyle Julius calls. Doug Polk is loving this spot. Little does he know that his King Kong is up against pocket rockets. Our hand begins with me opening it up with pocket kings, my second favorite hand in the hijack. Now, in the cutoff, Ite decides to 3-bet here to 500 with 9-5 suited. Now, I like mixing in some bluffs against a hijack open range, particularly against players that are more loose, but this is probably a bit too wide. If you're going to use something suited, look for something more along the lines of 9-8 or 9-7 suited, maybe 6-5 suited, and a few suited aces might round it out. You could also look to use some offsuit broadways as bluffs too, or maybe even some low pairs if you don't want to flat them. But a hand like 9-5 suited is simply too loose, and if players start to cold 4-bet light, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. So in this situation, pick your bluffs wisely, work them in, but don't get too aggro and use 9-5. Anyway, after she 3-bets, the action folds to Kyle Julius in the big blind, who looks down at my favorite hand in the no-limit hold'em, pocket aces. Now, this is never a good situation for kings, but the aces has to decide the best way to make the money. When two loose players are opening and 3-betting, you generally want to come in for 4-bets fairly aggressively because you know they're going to have wide ranges and it's not really that bad of a spot to bluff. Let's say Kyle Julius had a hand like Ace-Jack here or maybe King-Queen suited. This would be a nice spot to come in for the 4-bet knowing that both of the original players are pretty loose. Imagine I have a hand like Ace-Queen off or King-Queen suited myself. 
and there's a cold four bet, I'm gonna have to probably just fold, leaving the action between him and Ite. And if Ite is getting a bit too loose and has too many bluffs, well, it's gonna be a great spot to bluff four bet. Well, Aces isn't really a bluff four bet, it is a nice hand to have in that range. You're probably gonna wanna have all the hands you wanna play in a four bet range. So Kyle goes ahead and makes it 1450 here in the big blind. After Kyle makes it 1450, the action's back over to me. Now, in this spot, I generally don't like to call with any hands. The reason is because I'm getting a very bad price on the flat. I'm calling a huge raise relative to my open because it's gone open 3-bet, 4-bet. So, in general, I would play this spot by 5-betting by five betting, a very tight range, working in a couple of bluff hands, like maybe even a hand like Ace-King-Off, planning on folding to a jam, and then additionally having hands like Queens Plus. You could maybe argue to create some kind of call range, but given that you don't even close the action, you're really kind of asking for it because now you're going to have to either trap good hands to avoid getting back raised or just be exploitable, which isn't that bad. But if Kyle has a lot of four bet bluffs or four betting some weaker hands, you're going to be in a tough spot. So I go ahead and five bet to 4150, and in retrospect, I think I made a bit of a mistake. A lot of people in the channel say, Doug, why don't you ever like say you played something badly? You know, I make mistakes all the time. I think I'd like to see a size a little bit more around 3600, 3700. Maybe at the time um, I had had too much scotch or whatever. I'm not exactly sure why I decided to go so large. This size should be a bit smaller. But I do think 5-betting is the correct play so that I can have my range be balanced here when I'm facing a cold 4-bet. Now Ite decides to let it go and the action's back over to Kyle. With pocket aces in this spot, you do have a bit of an interesting decision. On one hand, if your opponent has a hand like kings or is getting really aggressive with ace, king, or queens and is going to stack off, then yeah, you're going to leave some money on the table by flatting. But realistically, when you're over 300 blinds deep here, we're probably something around 340 blinds deep, the problem for you is going to be you're mainly just going to stack kings. So if you call, you allow your opponent an opportunity to bluff on some later streets. You could maybe decide against some aggressive opponents to go for the call and against maybe some tighter opponents that are not too likely to have 5-bet bluffs to just jam and hope they have kings. I don't really hate either strategy. I think against myself, calling is probably the better play, which Kyle does, and let's take a flop. I feel like... <laughs> flop, ace, king, eight. Both of them in a set. Are y'all liking this? We They're sure both going to slow play themselves into the oblivion. Well, I, I don't think Doug Polk is going to slow play here. I think he's he's going to bet. We're going to have to see Doug's reaction when these cards get turned over. Oh, yeah. He's not going to believe it. Can we? Can we <laughs> As somebody who plays heads up, no limit professionally. You know what? The, I'm going to talk to the uh, sound guys for a second. Can, can we turn the uh, the players up for, for just, just for the end of this hand? Exactly. He already just, can we, can we have the players turned up for the next five minutes. Thank you. Thanks. There's going to be a lot of interesting, uh, you know your hand beat a lot. <laughs> maybe not even interesting, just the things we want to hear at the end of this hand. We're going to, we're going to turn up the volume on them for you. Now, Doug has a backdoor diamond draw, and I'm one that always recognize when you flop middle set and have a backdoor diamond draw because I, I got a pretty saucy one in at the World Series where I, I flop middle set against top set, and I, I, I ran to a flush. I get to drive home and go home with my kids. Oh. And my husband. So I'm sure you can't play the seniors. They get the seniors tomorrow. Yeah. What is Doug putting Kyle on? Am I even have to do that? I'd be putting Kyle on a hand like Ace Queen suited. Possibly Ace King. The flop comes a pretty reasonable Ace King 8, and Kyle checks it over to me. Now, in this spot, I would likely be betting all of my hands. When I 5-bet, I have a very narrow and specific range of hands because really, there are only so many hands that can profitably 5-bet. Even if I was bluffing, I'd want to make sure I had a hand with good card removal, like Ace-King or Ace-Queen. And yeah, in general, you wouldn't want to bluff with Ace-King, but it could be pretty reasonable in this spot pre-flop. 
you're not going to want to play for 340 blinds with ace king and because it is a spot where you'd want to five bet all of your hands that you continue with it does make sense to use ace king as your bluff hand so in this spot i'm going to have aces kings ace king and then also maybe hands like queens jacks or ace queens suited you could argue to maybe have a few checks working some hands like queens because it doesn't make too much sense as a bet, but in general, I'm mainly going to be betting this flop. I decided to go for a smaller bet size because I don't think the draws are too relevant. It's unlikely my opponent had a hand like a seated Broadway and decided to cold 4-bet call with such a large 5-bet. He could definitely have hands like ace-queen suited or ace-king, but he's not going to have hands like queen-10 suited or jack-10 suited. I think those hands would just fold if they did decide to cold 4-bet. So a small size here makes a lot of sense because my opponent's going to have either an ace or maybe a hand like queens or jacks, which we're probably going to have to fold even versus the smaller bet size. Anyway, I bet, and now it's over to Kyle, and with aces here, I think you kind of have to just call. Yeah, there's some chance I could have flopped the hand like a flush draw, but it's really not very likely considering the kinds of hands I might want to bluff with that could hit flushes are a hand like ace x of diamonds and the ace of diamonds is on the board, so he shouldn't be too afraid of anything. The only thing in this spot that maybe I might have is a hand like queen jack suited, maybe king queen of diamonds, very unlikely hands that are almost always going to just be folding to the cold four bet. Anyway, he decides to go ahead and call and set the trap for later streets, and let's take a turn. Tomorrow. Oh, four diamonds. You said it may be coming. I think Doug Polk knows he has a hundred dollar trip up against the rail right now. I'm not, I'm not sure he's concerned with that. Wow, Doug Polk checks. Doug Polk checks. The turn comes the four of diamonds, giving me some hope with the backdoor flush draw. Once again, Kyle checks it over to me, and now I have kind of an interesting decision. I think if I had a hand like uh, ace-king or kings without a diamond, I'd be looking to jam here on the turn. But the thing is, when you have the set and the flush draw, there aren't really any runouts that I'm worried about. What rivers would even be bad for this hand? Maybe an ace if you had ace-king? Well, that's very unlikely because I have king-king and there would be two aces on the board. So really, there's nothing I'm that afraid of, and I'm going to want to occasionally have some hands to check back the turn. Well, second set with the nut flush draw is probably one of the best candidates to go for the check, so I decided to check it back and play some rivers. River card is a six. He doesn't get a diamond. Kyle Julius has 9,000 left. I feel like we're golf announcers now. I feel like you're a golf announcer now. He checks! That's not a golf announcer. <laughs> Well, there's no way Doug Polk is checking. The river comes an offsuit six, and now Kyle has an interesting decision point. He can either jam and try and get called by maybe a hand like ace-king, or ace-queen, or kings, or he can check, still stack a hand like kings, and maybe pick off a bluff or two. I think both options have some merit. I don't really mind either way. It's going to be kind of a moot point against a hand like kings, because that hand's always calling you either way. He decides to check it over to me, and now I'm considering going all in. I'm looking at the board and I'm looking at him and I'm thinking, this is a hand I'm going to have to jam. But wait, which hand did he call with on the flop? His left hand, but he always calls with his right hand. Wait, what did he do on the turn? Oh my god, he blinked when he checked. Check their eyes, because if they're blinking really fast, they're probably not telling you the truth. I saw this earlier. I saw him do this exact same play when he had the goods. Because if you flopped a set of kings there, he's not going to cover his mouth to scratch the back of his neck and then... Okay. Got to take some deep breaths. All right. At least... At least he didn't recheck his cards when he called the five bet. A lot of players would have checked their cards already. If, if he did that, I would have to check back. Most people who recheck their whole cards as non-aggressors, it's a weakness thing? No. No! No! Oh my god! He's got aces. Let's think about this seriously, okay? Kyle Julius. 
All right, Julius, like Julius Caesar. And Julius Caesar, like Caesar salad. And Caesar salad, like one of my favorite things. And one of my favorite things, aces. I can see everything clearly now. He's got aces. I guess I'm gonna have to make one of the sickest plays in poker history. Oh, fuck. Thank you guys for joining today. I will be streaming over on Twitch at 3 p.m. Pacific time. I'll see you there at DougPolk.tv.